Okay, today we're talking about um, depreciation methods. What do we depreciate in accounting? In accounting, we depreciate fixed assets. They are fixed assets are long term. They have relatively permanent in nature. Uh, they're things that exist physically, so we can see, feel, and touch our fixed assets. They may be computer equipment, vehicles, our building, uh, machinery. There's a lot of different things that comprise fixed assets. We're going to keep them for uh, a relatively long period of time, more than a year. And they, um, the only asset, that, fixed asset that we don't depreciate is land. Now in accounting, depreciation is not necessarily have anything to do with the reduction in the market value of the asset. So don't mistake this for that. It's simply the systematic allocation of part of the cost of that asset over the period of time, uh, the life of the asset. Um, so it's properly, it helps to, us to follow the matching concept where we're properly uh, looking at the depreciation expense that went with that particular period. We need to know um, three things to compute depreciation. We need to know what the asset's initial cost was. Now, if you've looked in your chapter, you'll see that there's a whole section in the beginning about what actually goes into initial cost. Uh, it could be our sales tax, delivery charges, setup charges, anything that we need to do to get an asset ready for use. If you bought used equipment and you had to fix it before you could use it, that would become it part of the initial cost, an installation base. If you dropped whatever it was on your big toe and you broke it um, while you were installing it, the cost of fixing that would not be the initial cost, that would be a repair cost. So, <clears throat> The other thing we need to know is its expected useful life. I want you to keep in mind that this is just an estimate, the expected useful life. How many years are we expecting to use it and get a benefit from it? And then the residual value. What is it going to be worth at the end of its useful life? And it's, if it's anything like the old computer I got rid of, it might be worth something for parts, but basically nobody would want to buy it. So sometimes there's no residual value. We also see that in some cases called salvage value. So salvage value and residual value are really the same thing. The first method that we're going to look at, which is the easiest, is the straight line method. And just like it's telling you it's going to be straight, we're going to depreciate the same amount each year when we calculate it. To do this, we'll take cost minus residual value over the asset's useful life. We're also going to look at the double declining balance method. But first, let's look at this very first asset. And these also will be on your handouts, so I hope you've downloaded the handouts uh, that go with this. The equipment, it says here, cost $24,000. Its useful life is five years. Its estimated re uh, residual value is $2,000, and it was purchased at the beginning of the year. So if we were to calculate the straight line, we would take the cost of $24,000 minus the residual value of $2,000. Over how many years is it? Five years? Okay. So if we uh, break that down, that would be what? 22,000 over five, which should come out to $4,400 per year. So we usually calculate annual, uh, depreciation annually. And the, if you're using straight line, it's the same amount each year, each 12 month period. But there's another method we'll also uh, be learning about called the double declining balance method. It's what you call an accelerated method, and more depreciation is taken in the, in the first few years. Now this is um, also um, follows generally accepted accounting principles, so either one of these uh, could be chosen depending on what type of asset it is. Um, to do the double declining balance method, we have to... Um, Follow these three steps up here that you'll see at the top of your page. Calculate the straight line rate, multiply the straight line rate by two, and multiply the, uh, the rate by the asset's book value. Let's see how that works. All right, for this very first one, this example we're looking at, it's already worked out on your sheet. Um, 
the useful life here is five years. So to get the rate, to calculate the rate, we would take one over five. And one over five gives us, one over five gives us 20%. And 20% then we'd be to multiply it by two, which will give us 40%. So you can see on this um, little grid here that we put down 40% for each year. I find it really helpful when doing the uh, declining balance method to set up a grid such as this. Um, it just makes it easier to go down line by line to keep track of your costs. All right. When, <clears throat> so again, it's 40% it's of the value, 40% of the book value. So let's talk a little bit about what book value is. Book value is, is equal to cost minus any accumulated depreciation meaning of depreciation that's accumulated over the years. But on this first year we bought the asset, it's $24,000. When we multiply it by the 40%, we should get annual depreciation of 9600 And that brings our book value, which is cost minus um, accumulated depreciation, which for the first year is going to be the 9600 that's all we depreciated, will give us the 14400 left. Then we're going to take that 14400 and multiply it by 40%. You do that, you should get 5,760. And when we, we take that away from our book value at the beginning of the year, we should get 8,640. When we take that 8,640, multiply it by 40% to get 3,456. And so on, all the way down to the last year. Now, one way that this differs from this double declining balance method differs from the straight line method is that we don't take residual value out in the beginning. So in the beginning we just used the twenty-four thousand. We did not multiply we didn't take out the two thousand dollar residual value. But in the very last year we actually force the book value to be the residual value. Because you could actually go out till you got to a hundred and you'd never, no matter how many periods, you would never bring your book value down to get, get rid of it. It just it won't work. So in the last year, we force it to be equal to the book value. <clears throat> so for this last year, when we came over, our book value was $3,110. Instead of taking this $3,110.40, has the 40 cents on the end, and multiplying it by 40%, we take the $3,110.40 and subtract out 2000 the residual value, to give us our annual depreciation of $1,110.40. Okay, if we look at this now, we've compared, we compare it two different ways. We've looked at the 4400 same asset per year for the straight line. We'd be that same way for all four years. I'm sorry, all five years. But if you look at this one, you see we're taking a whole bunch in the first year, the 9600 and then it continues to get smaller. Um, until we get to the fifth year. So we call this an accelerated method. And that's going to have an impact, obviously, on our bottom line. In the first years, our income is going to be lower if we're using this accelerated method. But let's try one and see how, uh, see how we do um, practicing one. Okay, the next one here says the equipment costs 86000 It has a useful life of eight years. An estimated residual value of ten thousand, and it's purchased at the beginning of the year. Okay, so how are we going to calculate calculate that using the straight line um, method? We would take cost. It didn't say we start with cost of eighty six thousand. Subtract out the residual value. Which what was our residual value here? Ten thousand. And then we'll take that over the number of years, which was eight years, the years of useful life. Again, it's going to be given to you in your problems, any problem you do in the book. All right, this is 86,000 minus 10,000 is 76,000. Take that over eight, and we're going to come out to 9,500. Now, how different, and that would be per year. How different is that going to be if we use the declining balance method? <clears throat> Let's go back up to the steps we need to use the declining balance method. One thing you can do is 
I always recommend that you, you set up a grid, whether or not your problem calls for it or not. It's one way of making sure that you get it right. <clears throat> it's, a lot, it's a lot easier not to get it right if you don't use a grid. All right, the first thing it says we've got to do is calculate the straight line rate. This was an eight-year um, asset. So we would be taking one-eighth per year. We take one over eight, we get 12.5 percent per year. However, don't round it, multiply it by two, and you get 25 percent. So that says first we have to determine the rate. Then we want to multiply the rate by the asset's book value. Okay, I want you to notice that this only goes down for two years, this particular problem, so it's only taking you two years. So even though it said it was uh, how many years? It has an eight-year life. Is that what we see here? I'm not going to make you go all the way down all eight years because I think once you get the, the process down, you can kind of see how it works. We don't need to do endless calculations. All right, so the book value at the beginning of the year is its cost. We haven't depreciated anything yet. Book value is always cost minus any accumulated depreciation. All right, so we take our book value at the beginning of the year, and what did we say our rate was here? We had calculated 25%, so we can go ahead and fill that in for both, both years here. Okay, 86,000 times your 25% gives you 21,500, should. Now this last um, block over here asks for book value. Maybe one line off here. So we're going to take our 86,000 minus the 21,500 to give us a book value of 64,500. Then it, the next line here asks us for the book value at the beginning of the year. So we're going to take that 64500 and multiply it by 25%. So that should give us 16125 Then to get our book value at the end of the second year, we just take the book value at the beginning of the year of 645 minus the 1625, which would bring us down to 48,375. Now you can also think about how this would affect your income taxes. There is an accelerated method, it's been around for years, called the Modified Cost Recovery System. And um, it's an accelerated method. It's not exactly like this, but it's very similar. Um, the IRS actually makes it a little bit easier, believe it or not, to calculate by hand, um, but it's also done very well on the computer. Again, it's another thing to think about is how that's going to impact your bottom line. But these are used for financial statement purposes. It may not be exactly the same as what you find on income tax, but anytime we start talking about depreciation, people always want to know how it's going to affect their taxes because it is a non-cash expense. <clears throat> And I hope this helps you in our chapter on fixed assets and depreciation.